Yeah, this shit's important. Like, what the hell, YouTube? Where is the fair use? Welcome to the Fanfiction Multiverse Show. Now, this is a show where I basically talk about fanfiction that I've written, and stuff that I'm writing, and make announcements. I write fanfiction because, well, to be blunt with you, I had suffered from depression back in the early 2000s. And to cope with it, I wrote fanfiction. And the depression was really bad. It nearly ruined my life, ruined my marriage. And I lost several jobs because of it. Now, I didn't take any drugs. I had no one help me through it. Finally, I had help from my friends. I got out of the environment that was causing my depression. And I'm a lot better now. I've got out of religion. I think partially that was part of the cause of why I went into it in the first place. I discovered new spiritual, spiritual, spirituality. Blah, 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 I can't talk. Spirituality that is changing my life. A lot of things are happening. Doors are opening up for me. You know, I've started this channel up again. I've got a whole bunch of new shows going. I've got stuff going on behind the scenes with the gamers band things going on with them that can open up even more doors. And it, my life is really changing a lot. And in all that, I still like reading fan fiction. I still like writing fan fiction. I think it's an art form. It is protected by fair use. It is a way to explore ideas. I don't adhere to the strict um, definition of fan fiction as just you know a, con a continuation of stories as if the original artist would have written them. I don't like the mentality of canon cops, knights of the true fiancé, and all that other, you know, bullshit. I don't adhere to it. I also don't shy from controversial con controversial concepts. Can't, still can't talk. Blah, blah, blah. And I don't shy away from those things. I do not believe in political correctness. I think it's a disease. I think it obscures truth. And it is, it's being used for nefarious purposes to, it's being used by people who are pretending to be, who are pretending to fight for equality, for women, for minorities, for people of different sexual orientations. You know who these people are. They, we know them as social justice warriors, and they are using it to disguise a, an ideology of intolerance and hate as if it were a, a movement for equality, a movement for change, and it's wrong what they are doing. I won't be a part of it. It is wrong what they are doing. Well, that's my stance on that. So, this show is all about I mean, basically informing you about the stories that I write, telling you where I'm at in updating them, what they're about, when the next chapters are coming. So, let's get into and talk about a few of them that I'm going to be updating in the next couple of months and give you some ideas about them. Nindo the Force is a story that I uh, started some time ago. It's a meshing of Naruto and Star Wars together. I really like this story. It is... Sort of a, what you would call... Not a crossover. It's more of a mix between the two genres. The Nindo the Force takes ideas that the ninjutsu abilities of the shinobi of Naruto's world 
is actually the force being used. They are force sensitive. But they don't know it. And they call it chakra, but it's actually the force that they're using. And so, you know, Naruto and Jiraiya are leaving on their journey, leaving on their training trip, which takes place between the original Naruto series and Naruto Shippuden. And they take shelter in a cave, discover an ancient ship. They don't know it's a spaceship. They accidentally activate a failsafe, and the ship takes off with them aboard. And it was originally going to Coruscant, but its systems are so ancient and falling apart that it has to land on Tatooine instead. And they get stranded there with no way to get back to their homeworld. They don't know where it's at. The coordinates aren't in the computer. They end up meeting up with the Skywalkers and make friends with them and start building a new life there on Tatooine. And Naruto sees how bad life is for people there, how bad it is for the slaves in, in Mos Espa. And he wants to change things. He wants to build a new village there on Tatooine, form a new shinobi core there on the planet, and try and change people's lives, change them for the better. He adapts to the situation. You know, he wanted to be Hokage, but he realizes, you know, I may never go back. I might not ever get to go back, so I want to try and do some good here. And so that's what happens during book one. I've completed book one of this story, and book two just started with, with the first chapter of that, which begins the whole Battle of Naboo arc where Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon Jinn and the Queen show up on on Tatooine. And I've got a lot planned out for this story. I've planned it out pretty far ahead into the future. And I do a lot of research. I delve into legends a lot because, you know, Disney has been delving into the realm of Star Wars Legends and the Expanded Universe and pulling bits and pieces out like a, um, you know, like a buffet, saying, oh, this idea looks good, this idea looks good, this idea from KOTOR looks good, let's bring this in. And they're using elements from it. They're putting it into Star Wars Rebels, they put it into Star Wars Episode Seven. they'll likely also use some of it for Rogue One, which is coming this year. And so that's what I do. And I make sure to stay authentic to the Star Wars universe by doing a lot of research. I, uh, I have seen the Clone Wars series several times through. I'm well versed in all the films. Um, I will not have as very much. I will not have a lot of Jar Jar in the stories, thankfully. And I also won't be touching a lot on the whole Anakin and Padme thing, which will happen. But now, in this story, Naruto is not a Jedi. He does not become one. Uh, Anakin leaves for, for the Jedi Order and becomes one. Yes, that's what will happen in this second book. And, as I said, I've got a lot of stuff planned out. This is next to my first fan fiction which was the Dark Lord of Jirai. This is probably the most complex story I've written since then. So I hope you look forward to what's coming up next. You'll be able to find the story uh, on my fanfiction.net page which is in the link which is the link is in the description below. Beneath the Crimson Sky is a Ron Mahaf vampire story. Uh, this is another complex one. This one uses a universe that is my own creation entirely. I'm a fan of vampire movies and vampire stories. I watched vamp you know, Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel and I've read Anne Rice. I've read um, the original Bram Stoker novel of Dracula. And I'm a big fan of vampires. And I have my own take on them. The various races of vampires. I used to play Vampire the Masquerade. Uh, and the 
um, the vampire um, card game back when it was called Jihad, before the name was changed. And so the story is where Ranma early on was turned into a vampire just after Jacinkio. His father takes him into the mountains to a monastery where he thinks that uh, he'll be able to get help for him. And it turns out that the monks there are themselves vampires. They're members of a secret society called the Order of the Crimson Circle. Vampires who have dedicated their, um, their existence to fighting for humanity rather than against it. And Naruto joins their ranks. Sorry, Ranma joins their ranks and they go to Nerima and a lot of stuff happens there. I'm not going to spoil a lot of the story, but it gets fairly detailed into what happens. Um, the first book is done. I've started book two and I want to get further into that uh, very soon. So in the next uh, next month or two, I'm going to be releasing a new update to the story. Uh, some of the characters from the Ranma half, you know, and let me say this, this is probably one of my favoriteest anime out there, Ranma half is. I mean, not only because Jim Robert Bader writes some of the mo wrote some of the most incredible Ranma half fan fiction out there with a tale of two wallets which a lot of ideas from that came come into this and will be brought into other future stories and he was a good friend but um this is the second most complex story i've written there's a lot of detail a lot of a lot of uh lore world building that will be going into this uh into this next book things, concepts, ideas that I've been working on that I want to bring into it. One of Ascension is a story that I have not been updating as much as I should have. People have been asking for a continuation of this because I sort of, I sort of left it with a cliffhanger. Uh, a very controversial thing happened at the end. As I said, I'm not going to shy away from controversy ever. Don't ask me to. Don't tell me, oh, don't use that. Don't use that. It's wrong. No. Fuck you. I'm going to use it. Why? Because it's effective. I use it where I think it's appropriate. So don't try and tell me that it isn't right. Don't try and tell me that you can't use it because it's not politically correct. You can go screw yourself if that you come from that angle. I will absolutely not absolutely will not ever shy away from controversy with my stories. You can be assured of that. Now, to move on with this, Run My Ascension is something that I came up with near the time when I was just coming out of my depression. And it tells the tale of Erd came to Ranma during the Nico Ken training when he was a child, when his when his father his idiot father threw him into a pit of starving cats while he was wrapped in fish products. If anyone knows the Ranma half manga and anime, it's a comedy series. It has no plot uh to really speak of. Um almost nothing in the way of Absolutely almost nothing in the way of character development. So I wanted to include some of that. I wanted to bring character development. I wanted to bring some good stories into this. Maybe take the characters into a completely different area. Completely different scenarios than, the, than they've ever faced before. Put them into some pretty dark situations. And to save Ranma's mind during the Nikoken... Erd merges with him and then years later something occurs and Ranma's life is at stake and Erd has to finish the merger or they will both cease to exist and so they cease to be one person, cease to be two individual people with two separate personalities 
and become one person with a merged personality. Uh, Ranma with Erd's personality. Yeah, that's that's as scary as you 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 think it is. And I left the story on a, a big controversial cliffhanger, and I will be writing a conclusion for it, and it will be out next month. So I will be continuing this. There are other stories that I will be making announcements on next week. So stay tuned for the next show. Now, I have some technical difficulties. I have some uh, other announcements for other stories. There are many stories that I will be dropping because, as I said, when I wrote most of them, I was suffering from depression. I was in a vibration that I am not in now. And I tried to continue them and I can't because they were written from a different perspective. They're a different mindset. I would have to rewrite them if I ever continued them. And there's a lot of them that, I, that I'd that i have to do this to. You know, A Warrior and the Peacemaker is one of them. One of these stories. I would have to completely rewrite the story from the beginning. So, I will be keeping you up to date. And, you know, if you've ever considered getting into fan fiction writing, just do it. You know, just do it. Don't be afraid of it. You know, it is an art form. It's protected by fair use. Don't be afraid that people are going to think you're strange because you write it. I mean, believe it or not, believe it or not, most of the best fan fiction writers out there, they are doctors. They're lawyers. You know, it's not just teenage kids living in their mother, teenage kids and college dropouts living in their mother's basement that are writing fan fiction. It's not just weird nerds. They are, some of the best fan fiction out there is written by professional people. You know, scientists, doctors, lawyers. So don't be discouraged. Get out there and write. Get out there and be creative. Don't be afraid of it. So, that's my message. And next week I'll be making a few more announcements. And until then, peace. Namaste.